Hello, I'm Kurt Hoffbeck, field agronomist with Pioneer. Now is a good time to get out in those earlier planted cornfields and check for any issues that may have affected emergence, such as soil crusting. Lately, we have been getting some frequent rain showers and the forecast for the upcoming week is sunny, hot, and windy, all key ingredients that may allow for soil crusting to develop. Granted, the heavier rain events and fields that have been tilled or even overtilled can be especially vulnerable to soil crusting, and that can make emergence difficult for cornfields planted within the last week. The first thing I like to do is look for any emerging plants that may appear to be struggling and use a trowel to flip over any crust layers that may be holding some of the plants back. Pay special attention to the thickness of the crust and look closely for any ruptured coleoptiles or plants that have started to leaf out underground. To help catch soil crusting early, I use a rule of thumb. Actually, it's more like the rule of the index finger. If you push straight down into the soil with the tip of your index finger and can sink it into the soil up to about your first knuckle, a coleoptile of a corn plant will likely be able to penetrate through that soil crust layer and establish stand. However, if you are unable to sink your index finger into the depth of your first knuckle, then a coleoptile of a corn plant likely won't be able to penetrate through that type of a crust layer either. Timing is key when it comes to trying to remedy soil crusting issues. You will want to be out there early with a rotary hole or turning on a pivot if you have one to remedy the crusting situation with the goal of being out there early to catch many plants before they have ruptured their coleoptiles or have started to leaf out underground. Because once that happens, there is no pushing power left to make it through a broken up crust or clods if you have rotary hoed too late. It is important to have access to a well-maintained rotary hoe to help rescue a crop when needed. Be sure to keep your speed up with the rotary hoe traveling 8, 10, even 12 miles per hour. The faster you travel, the more effective the hoe will be, but crop damage can also increase with the added speed. I recommend doing stand counts before hoeing, traveling 100 yards with the rotary hoe to get up to the speed you desire, and then stop and check behind the rotary hoe to see how the rotary hoe is doing. Determine if the rotary hoe is helping or causing more damage than the crust would have caused itself to stand establishment. Generally, 1-5% to stand loss with hoeing is acceptable, but your tolerance level may vary on the severity of your crusting situation. I have seen plenty of examples where we have had a half a stand with a crust layer, and after timely rotary hoeing, we were able to get 80-90% to 90 plus percent of plants to emerge but you have to be early with the rotary hoe to be effective. I like to stake out one one thousandth of an acre after rotary hoeing to determine how many viable plants were gained and I will flag some of the partially damaged plants to see if they were able to establish and contribute to the final stand as well. If needed, you can rotary hoe soybeans too, but timing there is even more critical. You will want to avoid damaging or cutting off any of the soybean hypocotyls at the soil surface that are in that shepherd's crook stage because if you do damage those hypocotyls or cut them off, the plants will die. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions about this topic or any others, please reach out to your local Pioneer sales professional. That concludes this Pioneer Growing Point Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.